today we're taking a look at 20 of my favourite games for the original Game Boy. Number 20 is Operation C by Konami. If you've ever played any of the NES Contra games before, then you'll know exactly what to expect with this. And Konami is a company that knew the Game Boy incredibly well and pumped out loads of classic games for the system. In fact, you'll be seeing their names a few times throughout this list. But what can I say about Operation C? As far as I'm aware, this is actually a completely original Contra game for the system. They did also release a Game Boy port of Contra 3 as well, which is also really good but this is the one that I always go back to. It controls really well, it's actually quite fast paced considering it's on the original Game Boy, and a lot of action platformers on the Game Boy actually slowed the pace down a lot, including a game that Konami made before this, which was the original Castlevania. That game crawled at a snail's pace, whereas this game actually doesn't feel that far off from the NES games that inspired it, and it really stands tall as one of the best action games on the system. Highly recommend playing Operation C if you're into your run and gun shooters. Number 19 is an arcade classic by Capcom and a fantastic conversion to the Game Boy. This is Snow Brothers. I really love this simple single screen style arcade game and Snow Brothers is one of the best out there. Not the best though, there is another one coming a bit later on from Taito, so maybe that gave you a hint, but Snow Brothers is a very unique game. Basically, you can trap the enemies in snowballs and then you can actually push them and bounce them around the stage. It's a classic arcade style game where you just have to clear the screen of enemies and then move on to the next slightly more challenging stage. It's incredibly fun and just like Operation C, it's a game that I go back to time and time again on the original Game Boy. Number 18 is a Mega Man game by Capcom and the one that I picked out of the five that are available on the system is Mega Man 3. Although a lot of people say that Mega Man 5 is the best one on the Game Boy because it comprises of all new levels exclusively made for the Game Boy, the one that I always go back to and the one that I've had the most fun with is Mega Man 3. Although it's called Mega Man 3, it actually combines the best of Mega Man 3 and Mega Man 4. So you get the powered up shot and you also get to play through four of the Robot Masters from Mega Man 4, which is my favourite Mega Man game of all time. I actually enjoy this game so much that when I first got it, I think I picked it up at a, at a boot sale perhaps, in 2008 or 9 maybe, I actually did an entire let's play of this game on this channel about 13 or 14 years ago at this point, so if you are curious to see what my videos were like back then, like 13 years ago, and if you're curious about what Mega Man 3 on the Game Boy is all about, then definitely check that let's play series out, it is there somewhere in the depths of my channel at this point, but Mega Man 3, fantastic game. In fact, I love all of the original Mega Man games for the Game Boy, but this one is my favourite. Number 17, and back to Konami again. This is a follow-up to one of their worst games on the Game Boy. This is Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge. And this one is just an incredible leap forward in technology and gameplay and just fun as well. It takes everything that's great about the NES Castlevania games and puts them perfectly onto a Game Boy system. I also love the fact that you actually get to choose between one of four different starting locations. So if you are a little bit frustrated about not being able to get far enough in one of the levels, then you can actually choose a different level and try and tackle that one before going back and tackling one of the other ones. But of course, I, like a lot of people, when they play Castlevania 2, always come back to the incredible soundtrack. This is a game that you want to play with stereo speakers or with headphones on because the soundtrack in Castlevania 2 on the Game Boy is just one of the best chiptune soundtracks that I've ever heard, ever. It really is that good and I highly recommend you playing it with the sound up as loud as it can go. Number 16 now and a game by HAL. Of course it's a Kirby game but which one is it? It is the original Kirby's Dreamland and if you have a look at the front cover you can see that Kirby is actually white in this one because obviously the Game Boy is in black and white and they hadn't really decided what Kirby should look like. I guess they'd only seen concept art and the pixel art in the game so on the cover he is a little white ghost which is really fun but what else is really fun the game itself it's a very short game in fact while I was capturing footage for this video I actually completed the entire game from start to finish and it's just as much fun now as it was back in the day when I played this as a kid 
Although it's only 20 minutes long and it's incredibly easy, it's also incredibly well thought out. The entire game is basically split up into four different levels, and each one of them is very memorable. In fact, this is probably one of the few games where I could actually draw the entire game out off by heart just from muscle memory of playing this game so much as a kid. I love the soundtrack, of course, this introduced a lot of classic Kirby music that we still know and love today. One thing that is missing from this game though is the fact that there's no copy abilities. So the only way to attack enemies in the original Kirby's Dream Land is actually to swallow them and then spit them back out. Or to swallow the stars that some of the enemies make when they hit the ground or hit the air and stuff. It's a very, very simple game, but it's also extremely rewarding, and it also has some of the best graphics and physics on the Game Boy as well. And considering they made this so early on in the Game Boy's life, it really is a very big achievement for the Game Boy, and it holds up incredibly well today too. And if you are a fan of Kirby, you definitely owe it to yourself to go back and check out where he got his start. It is really fun. Number 15, and once again, we're back to Konami for another classic game. This is Nemesis 2. They did actually release a Nemesis game right at the start of the Game Boy's life, and that one was pretty good. For those of you that don't know, Nemesis is kind of an offshoot of the Gradius series, so it has the same sort of mechanics. You have the same sort of level-up weapon system, which we all know and love, and it's a fantastic system. But this game here, Nemesis 2 Return of the Hero, just takes everything up to the next level, and you can really see how much better Konami had got at programming for the original Game Boy. Just the intro stage to this is so cool, it goes at a really fast pace, it's really cinematic, you've got explosions in the background and you've got loads of enemies coming all over, and then it sort of settles down into a proper, full-on Gradius experience, and it is honestly one of the best shooting ups for the system, and I highly recommend it if you like Gradius and you want something a little bit different, definitely check out Nemesis 2. Number 14, this is Shadow Warriors, also known as Ninja Gaiden Shadow. This is a completely original game in the Ninja Gaiden series exclusively for the Game Boy, and I honestly think that I prefer this Ninja Gaiden game over the Master System and the NES games. It really is that good. Tecmo did an incredible job, once again, just like Konami, of translating the gameplay perfectly onto the Game Boy. It is a little bit slower paced than you would expect from the NES or the Master System, but they more than make up for that in level design, and once again the music in this game is fantastic too. It really is one of the best action games on the system, and if you enjoy Ninja Gaiden and you want something a little bit different to try out, definitely recommend Shadow Warriors. Number 13 is actually a sequel to a game that we've had earlier in the list. This is Kirby's Dream Land 2. They took everything that was great about the original game, shrunk the sprites down just a little bit to fit onto the Game Boy screen a little bit better and to give you a bit more of a field of view, and they just went wild with this game. It's an absolutely massive Kirby adventure that takes a lot more inspiration from Kirby's adventure for the NES. This is a full featured Kirby game, you've got copy abilities, you've got animal buddies, which was something brand new for this game that they then carried forward into Dreamland 3 on the SNES, which is another one of my favourite games of all time. They just did everything right with this sequel. The music, once again, is just absolutely phenomenal. The one gripe that I have against this compared to the original is the fact that the levels themselves aren't quite as memorable as they are in the first game, but everything else is a step above. And it also has some really nice Super Game Boy support as well, so you get a nice border, and you also get some colour graphics as well. Number 12 is a really interesting game, and definitely one of my favourite puzzle slash platformers that I've ever played. I I originally fell in love with this series thanks to the virtual console on the Wii because they released the NES version on there, and this is the Game Boy follow-up. This is called Solomon's Club. And it's a very interesting take on the puzzle platformer genre. Basically, you control this magician, I think, and you have a little wand and you can either make or destroy blocks, basically, and you just have to find your way around the levels, collect all of the collectibles in the stage, destroy the enemies, Find a key sometimes and just get to the exit. It's a very simple concept, but they make some incredibly intricate and deep level design in this that really pushes your skills to the limits and makes sure that you understand the game mechanics to their fullest. It's a really great game. I love the concept and the execution was perfect. Number 11 is known in the UK as Mystic Quest and it's known over in America as Final Fantasy Adventure. And I've actually got the American version right here. 
This is actually the first game in the Secret of Mana or Seiken Densetsu series, so it's Final Fantasy in name only basically, but what this game is, is a fantastic action RPG in the Zelda mould, and of course, you guessed it, Zelda's coming later on, and obviously this doesn't quite reach the same heights as Zelda Link's Awakening, but it is close. It is a really well made game, it feels a lot more focused than Zelda, it's a lot easier to find your way around. The overworld is great, and especially the music in the overworld. That brings back so many fantastic memories. And of course, the game's been remade and remastered several times over the years, but honestly, I still go back and enjoy the original Game Boy game more than any of those remakes. So if you enjoy Secret of Mana or Seiken Densetsu 3, or obviously the more recent Trials of Mana on the Switch and PlayStation and stuff, I definitely recommend, if you're interested, going back and checking out where the series got its start. You might be pleasantly surprised like I was. And now we're down to the top 10, and before we get to the top 10, I just wanted to make it absolutely clear that this list of games here is only the games that I actually own in my personal collection. There's a load of Game Boy games out there that I haven't played, or that I don't actually own personally, and I would love to try and visit some of those in the future, so let me know down below what games you think I missed out on this top games list, and I'll be sure to check them out. But for now, let's carry on with our list here, and number 10 is another puzzle platformer in the arcade style mold, and this is Bubble Bubble Part 2. Now this is a game that I grew up with as a kid. Literally every single day after school, I would come back home or I would go to my nan's house, which is actually the house that I'm in right now, and I would sit on the sofa downstairs in the living room right here, and I would just play Bubble Bubble Part 2 for hours and hours before I had to go home to my parents. I fell in love with this game, I don't know what it is about this sequel. I do actually have the original Bubble Bubble as well, but that one didn't grip me. But this sequel here, part 2, is just polished to perfection on the Game Boy. It has really nice big sprites, it does have a little bit of slowdown, but it's really nothing game breaking, but just the level design, the mechanics, the music, everything gelled together to make this one of my most favourite games on the system. And still to this day, I love the original Bubble Bubble series, and of course, like a lot of the other games, there's loads more games in the series on more modern consoles, but this is the one that I always come back to, and that must mean that there was something very special about this version. I even prefer it over the NES game. And this is actually one of the few original Game Boy games that I still have my original box in pristine condition for as well, so I am so happy to own that, that is very nostalgic for me. It is honestly a piece of my childhood and I'm so happy that I kept hold of it all these years. Number 9 is another puzzle game which is obviously a genre that the Game Boy really excelled at because it's the perfect console to take with you, play a few rounds of a puzzle and then just switch it off and obviously thanks to the battery backup you can go back and do more levels. This is of course Mario Picross. I love the Picross series, although unlike a lot of these games I wouldn't say that this is my favourite game in the Picross series, that would probably go to Picross DS just because I love using the stylus to actually select the different Picross puzzle pieces. But as a starting point, Picross on the Game Boy is fantastic. It's just such a timeless idea for a puzzle, obviously it goes back way before video games were even a thing. But having Mario as a mascot for this game and just having it on the go on the Game Boy is just a fantastic experience. There was also a sequel that came out in Japan which improved quite a lot as well, but I'm just focusing on UK and American games in this list. I will be doing a follow up with some Japan exclusive games though, so of course subscribe if you want to see that in the future. Number 8, and I think you all knew this one was coming, although maybe you didn't expect it to be this version of the game. This is Tetris, but not the one you're thinking of. This is Tetris Plus, and there's a very good reason for that, and that is because this does include the classic Tetris game. Granted, the uh, rules of the game are very slightly different to the original Game Boy Tetris. This one actually increases the speed once you build up a points meter, which then moves on to the next section of the game. It still plays really well, but the main reason that I love this game and the main reason why this is actually my favourite Tetris game out of all the hundreds, literally hundreds of different versions of Tetris. The reason that is, is because of the puzzle mode in this. Well, technically my favourite version is the PlayStation 1 version, but we're talking about Game Boy games here, and they did a great job of translating that gameplay onto the Game Boy. 
For those of you that don't know the gameplay in question, you basically have to guide this professor to the bottom of the Tetris well by deleting the rows and getting him to move down before a big spike comes down from the ceiling and eventually crushes him. It's so fun and it's so rewarding once you manage to figure out the right combination of blocks in order to free the professor and it just goes on and on. There's hundreds of levels and it is just a timeless concept for a game and I really wish that more companies would take the concept of having a character in the puzzle realm that you have to manipulate with the blocks. I just think it's absolutely genius and it holds up incredibly well today and I highly recommend Tetris Plus. Number seven, and this is an absolute classic, this is Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, which was actually for the longest time the final unique original 2D Mario game, all the way up until 2006 with the release of New Super Mario Bros for the DS. So basically this game had, I don't know, 12 or 13 years of being the latest 2D Mario game and it did a lot of really original things. There's a lot of concepts in this game that we've never seen Nintendo revisit really. They actually did a lot to improve on the first Super Mario Land. So if I'm being critical, I would actually put this above Mario Land 1 just because of the improved gameplay. Obviously the controls are much improved over the first one. The sprites also much more resemble the SNES Mario games rather than the very basic sprites in the, in the original Mario Land. And there's a lot of really unique and really memorable levels and environments in this game. Like the Lego level that's set inside a giant Mario made out of Lego blocks. And then you've got the levels that are based on the moon with low gravity. It's so cool. It's such a fun, it's such a unique game. And I also love the world map on this too. But it's not my favourite Mario game on the system. Number six is a yellow cartridge, and I bet you can guess what this one is. Donkey Kong Land 2, of course. This is basically a reimagining of my favourite Donkey Kong game, which is Donkey Kong Country 2, and Rare did an incredible job of translating the SNES gameplay and the SNES art style down onto the original Game Boy. I love Donkey Kong Land 1 and 3 as well, but but more than anything, I love Donkey Kong Land 2. I love playing as Dixie Kong for one thing. Dixie and Diddy are my favourite duo. I also love the different environments. I love the pirate theme. I love the amusement park. And I just love this game on the Game Boy. They did an incredible job of downscaling it onto the system. And when you're playing it on a Game Boy Color or on an emulator like I was, it actually separates the sprites from the background, which makes it a lot easier to play. And it did also have Super Game Boy support as well, which means that you could enjoy it on a TV and you'd get a nice border and a little bit of color thrown in there as well. Although, if you were playing it on the TV, I guess you would just play act the actual version of Donkey Kong Country 2 instead, but, you know, maybe you weren't lucky as a kid and had both, so this was definitely a good alternative. It's just such an incredible technical achievement that Rare managed to squeeze all of this onto one little Game Boy cartridge. And again, like I said about a lot of these games as well, the music, in fact, is absolutely incredible. I love the chiptune sounds out of the Game Boy, if you can't tell. Right, now we're down to the top five, and these are not only five of the best games on the original Game Boy, but actually five of the best games ever. We're starting off number five with, controversially, I would say Nintendo's most original and unique game on the system, and a game that they've never really beaten in this sort of style either. This is Donkey Kong, or better known as Donkey Kong 94. This is kind of a modern take on the original Donkey Kong arcade game, but they just went way beyond what anyone could have ever expected them to go with this game. First of all, it starts out deceptively simple as basically an, a reimagining of the arcade Donkey Kong game. But you might notice a few little things that are different. For one, Mario, or Jumpman, I guess. I presume he's Mario by this point is a lot easier to control and he actually has a lot of moves that come from things like Mario 64 including a sideward somersault and you even have the ability to stand on your hands and do a handstand and jump high in the air and spin off blocks and things and you can combine all of these moves together to make quite possibly the most acrobatic Mario that there ever has been even up until this day. It is an absolute joy to control and once you get past those initial few stages the game just opens up and it is a massive, sprawling arcade platformer adventure, and they did such an incredible job of keeping this game fresh all the way from start to finish. And I could honestly gush about this game forever. In fact, I'm probably going to play this over on stream and do a whole Retro Break replay video about this game because I just love it so much, and I really think more people need to check it out. So if you haven't already, 
Stop watching this video right now, go and buy yourself a copy, or download a ROM. Don't tell anyone I said that. And please, please, please play the original Donkey Kong on the Game Boy. You will not be disappointed. Top four now, and number four is another game that I kept my original box from as a kid. This is Wario Land 2. And I actually got this game on holiday when I first got my Game Boy Pocket because I think they came out around the same time and I was on holiday with my parents and we were going off to the south of France and they bought me a Game Boy Pocket and they bought me Wario Land 2 and I fell in love with this game. I played it all holiday. I probably didn't want to come back from holiday. I definitely didn't want to come back from the car journey on the way home because I remember just really wanting to just play this game and never get back home and I just absolutely loved it. Basically, it's a very different take on the Mario formula. Even though Wario Land started off as Super Mario Land 3, by the time of this second game it had completely become its own thing. It's a lot more slower paced kind of methodical platforming where you're going around finding different treasures that are hidden in the different stages and there's so many unique characters and Wario is just such a fun character to control and this is my favourite game in the entire Wario series. Of course there was a few more Wario Land games after this and then WarioWare, Wario Land Shake It which is an amazing game on the Wii. There's so many cool Wario games but this one is absolutely the highlight of the entire Wario catalogue for me. It is just the perfect fun Nintendo style platformer. Definitely recommend it. Number three is literally on this list for nostalgia alone. This is the original Super Mario Land and if you're thinking about this objectively, I would actually swap this one with Super Mario Land 2 and actually reverse those. But for me, Mario Land 1 is, more than anything, the one Game Boy game that I go back to more than anything else. I have mastered this game. In fact, back at college, I could actually match the world record speedrun for the original Super Mario Land. That's how much time and effort I've put into perfecting and mastering this game. It is a very different game, especially for the Mario series. It doesn't control anything like any of the other Mario games. It is very much its own thing, but I absolutely love it for that. I love all of its weird quirks. I love the fact that the physics just barely makes sense. I love the fact that you can complete the entire game in about 20 minutes. I love the fact that they went really wild with the theming on this level. There's one when you're in ancient China, and then you're at a beach, and then you're in the pyramids, and I just love everything everything about it. I love all the different enemies and all of their different patterns. I love the fact that the um, fire flower in this game bounces around the screen for some reason. And more than anything, like I said about a lot of these games, I love the soundtrack. There's literally, from my point of view any anyway, not a single thing that I can fault about this game. I think you'll struggle going to play this now if you've never played it before, but if, you, if you're like me, if you grew up playing this game, you will definitely have really fond memories of it. And I'll leave it there again, this is a game that I could gush about for hours and hours, but I won't subject you to that in this video anyway. Subscribe if you want to hear me gush about Super Mario Land for probably more than the length that it actually takes to complete the entire game. That's how much I can go on about that. Anyway, we have two left. And when I actually first did this video about four or five years ago, everyone in the comments complained that this game didn't make the cut. This is Link's Awakening, and the reason it wasn't in the last video is because I was saving that for a future video where I talked about Game Boy Color games, but this time I'm splitting them up into three different videos. So this one is just original DMG Game Boy games, and here it is, the original 1993 version of Zelda Link's Awakening. And in my opinion, by far the most technically impressive game for the system. This isn't really a downscaled Zelda game at all. This is a full featured, full size Zelda adventure to rival Link to the Past. In some ways, I actually prefer this to Link to the Past even. Again, like Mario Land, it's actually very different to the mainline series in a lot of more subtle ways, I guess, because the gameplay is very similar. It's very traditional Zelda, but the fact that it includes things like random Goombas and Yoshis in there, and spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't played this 30-year-old game at this point, but it's all a dream, so Nintendo could pretty much go wild with their ideas in this game. And it's so, so good. Obviously, it did get a re-release or a remaster, remake, whatever you want to call it, on the Switch in the form of the Switch version of Link's Awakening, which I definitely recommend. But that doesn't stop the original version being great as well. So either way, you're guaranteed to have a fantastic adventure with, with Link's Awakening. But number one, and you've probably realised that a certain franchise has been missing up until this point, and this is the other yellow cartridge, and I'm sure you can guess what it is this time. 
Pokemon Yellow, of course. The best of the original Pokemon games on the original Game Boy. And once again, a game that really pushes the Game Boy beyond its limits, honestly. The amount of content that they fitted into this game and just the size of the world and the amount of different Pokemon that you can collect is kind of mind-blowing for the time, honestly. And Yellow did improve a lot from Red and Blue. It improved a lot of the sprite work and it ironed out a few of the issues. And I just love the fact that you can walk around with Pikachu behind you as well. I was a big fan of the TV show as a kid, so I really loved the inclusion of that. And I'm sure you all know Pokemon. I really don't need to go into detail about how it plays or anything. So, yeah. It's my number one Game Boy game. It probably is the best game on the Game Boy. And I'm sure when I get around to doing my Game Boy Color series, then Pokemon Crystal is going to be number one on there as well. But we'll see. I'm still planning my list for that. I'll probably end up doing 20 as well, like I did for this one. If you enjoyed this video and you want more Game Boy stuff, then last week I actually did a video about limited run Game Boy games. So click up there and watch that one next.